Well, things are heated right now on Capitol Hill. That makes it a Tuesday. <laughs> Members of the House Judiciary Committee are pressing Attorney General Merrick Garland on the integrity of his Justice Department. Republicans say he's allowed the DOJ to become a political weapon during an intense election year. Chad Pergram is here now with all the details from that hearing, Chad. Harris, good afternoon. Well, there's no love lost between Merrick Garland, the attorney general, and Republicans on the House Judiciary Committee. This is one of the two committees that has voted to hold him in contempt. Republicans believe that the attorney general and his department is unfairly targeting Republicans. Listen. Many Americans believe there's now a double standard in our justice system. They believe that because there is. And we're going to have lots of questions about that problem. The full House has not voted to hold Garland in contempt of Congress. That's because the House may lack the votes. After all, it's about the math. Republicans want Garland cited with contempt after he refused to turn over audio tapes from the interview that special counsel Robert Herr conducted with President Biden. Garland is fighting back. These attacks have not and they will not influence our decision making. I will not be intimidated and the Justice Department will not be intimidated. We will continue to our, do our jobs free from political influence. In testimony, Garland told the committee, quote, our democracy cannot continue if the people who make the democracy run are afraid. Garland told the committee he has not listened to her interview with President Biden. Because there's no reason for me to listen to it to, in order to make the determinations that I had to make. I don't understand how you can kind of sit before the congressional committee and kind of arbitrate um, what's indistinguishable from the transcripts if you're not even sure what's on the tapes. Now, Garland says the tapes are full of ands and ums and pauses, and Republicans say that's exactly why they want to hear the tapes and compare them to the transcript. Harris? Well, sure. I mean, words on a page and listening to the cadence and, and if there's worry in one's voice, if there's forgetfulness, if there's stress, you can't communicate that with the written word right on the page with no context. So that totally makes sense. Chad, thank you very much. Your thoughts? Well, especially on those tapes, when the reason that was cited for not going forward in part was the mental acuity of the person being interviewed, and that can never be proper. We see how the White House manipulates the transcripts we get on a daily basis now from speeches or that, that Donald Trump gives. So how can you trust that? Uh, it was amazing to watch an exchange between him and Matt Gates earlier today that was on the channel about uh, ultimately how, how weaponized it has become, the, the moving of My Matthew Colangelo from the number three over to Alvin Bragg's office. All he does is plausibly deny. That's that, every time. I don't recall. I'm not involved. And that's what he'll say the entire time. So that's what I've wanted to ask Emily about ever since we watched it live last hour. How in the world can you have a situation where a man as powerful as the attorney general of the United States, who knows someone well, like a Matt Colangelo, how can you just simply say he took that exactly. low-lying job and not, and not be able to even put that in context for the rest of us? Like, well, was he unemployed? Was he desperate? Like, what happened? Right. And either way, that in that sort of binary choice, it either makes him look incompetent or ineffective or oblivious, which I guess is three choices. Um, and I note, too, you know, the, the, how, how transparent his defense is of not showing the video when he says, well, it could harm future investigations, the integrity. But that's exactly why we want to see the video. It's to ensure the integrity of that one. That was really important. Right. And as he went on, you know, his opening statements talking about the false claims against the DOJ as the Trump trial. He, he kind of sort of goes down the line, threats to defund particular DOJ departments, right? The Jack Smith counsel, special counsel, the false claims that a jury verdict in a state trial had anything to do with the DOJ. But at the end of the day, the whole point is it does. And him talking about the individual career agents, prosecutors being singled out for doing their jobs, baseless, extremely dangerous falsehoods. He's ticking things down a box, but he's not substantively addressing them in the way the American people deserve because the allegations against him have way more clout than his defenses do. All right. I want to get back to um, whether or not there were communications with other DA offices. Republican Matt Gates really got it started on this and really pressed Garland. Let's watch that together. Will the Department of Justice provide to the committee all documents, all correspondence between the department and Alvin Bragg's office and Fonnie Willis' office and Letitia James's office? 
The offices you're referring to are independent offices of state. I get of, that. I get that. State. The question is whether or not you will provide all of your documents and correspondence. That's the question. It's, I, I don't need a, a history lesson. Well, I'm going to say again, we do not control those offices. They make yeah, their the own decisions. The question is whether decisions. you communicate with them, not whether you control them. Do you communicate with them and will you provide those if communications? If you make a request, we'll refer it to our Office of Legislative but, Affairs. But see, here's the thing. You come in here and you lodge this attack. Okay, so again, the most powerful attorney in the United States, our attorney general, did not have communications. One of them used to work for him. I mean, connection points in all these offices that are going after President Trump, going after. Some of them had said it on the stump. Yeah. before they were in those positions, these DAs? Yeah, look, these are all great questions being asked by the congressman there, but I, I just want to point something out. You know, they say, Chad Pergram, there's no love loss between Republicans and Garland. Well, there's no love loss between Biden and Garland. And do you know who's watching this as closely as anyone on the Republican side of the aisle? It's Joe Biden. Joe Biden, April of last year in The New York Times, uh, it was previewed that a source said that Biden said, stop acting like a ponderous judge, Merrick Garland, and take action on January 6th. Then all of a sudden, Merrick Garland appoints two special counsels, Hunter and the Biden documents one. Well, the Wall Street Journal comes out with the frigid relationship between Biden and Garland. And then finally, this was interesting, Politico, February of this year, White House frustration with Garland grows. They even said Biden himself has not weighed in on Garland's future. Most senior advisors believe he will not have a job in a second term. So everyone's watching this man today. Republicans, Joe Biden as well. Well, one word to that, Hunter. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And I think that this is uh, hearing. Because no one is above the law, according to Joe Biden last Friday. <laughs> so true. And interesting that this uh, hearing is happening, this testimony is happening on the same week that the Hunter Biden trial gets started, because like you were just talking about, there's been all of this reporting about how President Biden's relationship with Merrick Garland has become frigid ever since the charges came down. So now here he is. He's probably thinking, oh, my my relationship with my boss isn't great. And now I got to defend all of this stuff to Republicans who don't want to hear it. Somebody pass me a drink. Or maybe not because of the plausible deniability thing, which he's been doing all day. But this is one of these hearings where Republicans can ask anything, That's and, right. including targeting people who shop at Cabela's and yep. Dick's Sporting Goods, mm. all the way to why were there protests allowed at uh, in front of the houses of Supreme Court justices? When there's a law that's a that. great that's a great all one. of it'll come that's up. Great. All right. Meanwhile, Biden's saying, um, hold my beer. Let me sign executive order on crisis Thank that you. I created. Yeah. The border. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.